Hello, everyone. Welcome to our second uh, webinar of the European Research Day. My name is Samrat Kumar from Eurexis India. For those who have not been able to join us yesterday, let me just tell you briefly that the Euro European Research Day is our annual flagship event taking place in different locations like Australia, China, North America, and also uh, the ASEAN countries. The India edition of the European Research Day is organized in partnership with the European delegation to India. And again, I would like to thank the delegation, especially the research innovation section team at the delegation, Ms. Tanya Friedrichs and uh, Dr. Vivek Dham for their kind support and also hard work to make this event happen today. The motto of this year's European Research Day, as uh, already mentioned yesterday, is international cooperation is the way forward. Especially now, more than ever, I believe that global challenges like COVID-19, pollution or climate change require a stronger commitment for international cooperation, particularly in the RTD sector. The European Green Deal and Horizon Europe, I believe, are two important pillars of international cooperation, providing the framework for researchers and innovators of all parts of the world to come together, to work together, and to develop together solutions for uh, our common problems. Uh, we are actually extremely proud today that so many of you have joined from different parts of the world, including India, Europe, we have uh, attendees from Korea, Japan, and we have quite a few attendees from the ASEAN countries. This makes our event truly international today and hereby also confirms that the EU's research innovation framework programs are truly open to the world. I'd like to take the opportunity here to thank my colleagues, your access colleagues, uh, Dr. Susanne renzo -Vasso in Singapore, Dr. Thomas Wyrstowski from Korea and Dr. Judith Magyar from Japan for spreading the word for this webinar and uh, creating awareness among the research communities. Now, please let me welcome our distinguished speakers of today's webinar, today's event. First of all, a warm, very warm welcome to our keynote speaker, Ms. Maria Christina Russo, the Director of, for International Cooperation at, uh, in Research and Innovation at the European Commission. Christina, thank you so much for joining. It's really an honor for us to have you here with us today. Of course, this event is nowhere without Ms. Tanya Friedrichs, Head of the Research Innovation Section at the European Delegation. Tanya, welcome uh, to our event. Also, I would like to welcome Ms. Claire Morel, uh, Head of Unit of the Maurice Godosco Curie Actions of the DG for Education, Culture, Youth and Sport at the European Commission. This unit is responsible for the mobility and training of researchers and the development of excellent doctoral programs at the European Commission. Warm welcome to Claire. And also, I would like to welcome her colleague, uh, Thierry Devar, who is the policy officer at the MSCA unit. Both of you uh, will have a very exciting session uh, with our audience at the later stage of the event. But first of all, I would like to express uh, my deep gratitude to the ambassador of the delegation uh, of the European Union to India, His Excellency Ugo Astuto, for giving the inaugural speech also for today's event. His Excellency could not join us, but he's sending his warm greetings and a kind message which we would like to share with all of you now. Dear researchers and innovators, it's a pleasure for me to welcome you all at this session of the European Research Day, a session about the future of the cooperation on research and innovation between the European Union and India. At the summit in July, our leaders agreed to broaden the scope of our cooperation and to address together a number of pressing global challenges, such as the fight against COVID-19, or the fight against climate change, and how best to foster a human-centric digital revolution. At the summit, we also adopted the roadmap, Roadmap 2025, which charts the way to achieve these objectives. It includes also several commitments to strengthen our cooperation on research and innovation. With the Green Deal, we want Europe to become a climate neutral continent by 2050. 
and we want to work for a clean circular economy, preserving biodiversity and cutting pollution. With a European digital agenda, we want to achieve a human-centric digitalization. For the twin green and digital transitions, research and innovation is absolutely crucial. This is why the next research program of Horizon Europe will include many research opportunities centered on these topics. We will continue to build and support research and innovation alliances with friends and partners sharing the same priorities based on common values and principles. The European Union and India as like-minded partners can play a key role in shaping an effective response by the international community to these global challenges. In short, there is ample scope for cooperation between the EU and India on research and innovation and much to expect from the new program Horizon Europe. Your numerous participation today is an encouraging sign to continue the good cooperation that we have built over the years. I'm sure that uh, together we will offer a significant contribution to a green, resilient and digital future. Thank you. Well, thanks to His Excellency the Ambassador for these kind words and also for emphasizing that research innovation are absolutely crucial for a green, clean and digital transition. Now, before we go over to our first session with our keynote speaker, I just want briefly to share some general information with you about the webinar. So please, there is a chat function where you can post your questions and we will answer the questions at, at the end of each session. But due to time constraints, we will not be able to answer all questions. But if your questions are not answered, please send this uh, to us and we will get back to you. In case of technical issues, please, uh, if you're facing any issues, try to log out and log in again. And don't worry, we will send you a follow-up email with all the presentations and the recording of today's webinar. We will also ask you for a feedback at, in the following up email, uh, which will be very valuable for us to know how you ex experience this webinar. And if you're looking for partners or possibilities to participate in the uh, upcoming calls on the Horizon Europe, we can definitely help you to facilitate those. Thank you. Now I'm happy to hand over uh, the mic to Tania Friedrichs, who, who will open uh, our first session on international cooperation in Horizon Europe. Tania, uh, the mic is yours. Here. Good afternoon, everybody. Can, I, can you hear me? We can hear you very clearly. Right, 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 because, sorry, it was because of some technical issues at our end, at my end, that we couldn't start on time, so I want to apologize. But let's uh, um, welcome you on my, from my side as well, research and innovation section at the delegation of the European Union to this wonderful event uh, with a rich number of panelists and testimonials on our cooperation between Europe and India. Uh, and not so much what it was, but uh, ahead uh, of what is coming ahead of us. And who else or anybody else better than my director, uh, Christina Rousseau, could open uh, that session. Christina, um, I welcome you very much. I'm so happy that you could make it. First step to India, virtual. We've tried several times to have you, uh, but we're not giving up but at least we're very, very pleased that today uh, you could be uh, with us uh, virtual and uh, outlining with us the future cooperation opportunities between Europe and India on research and innovation. Thank you very much. And the floor is yours, Christina. Thank you very much, Tanya, for your kind and enthusiastic uh, words. A good afternoon to everybody. It's morning here in Brussels, but uh, it's afternoon there. As Tanya said, uh, uh, several times uh, we had planned uh, for my visit uh, in India, my visit uh, from a professional point of view, because I had the chance to see this beautiful uh, um, country already in other occasions. But uh, unfortunately, it was not uh, possible. 
And now, due to the COVID situation, uh, it's uh, even, uh, um, again, not possible. But I, I'm very, very happy to then be able to be with you virtually in this uh, fantastic edition of the European Research Days. And let me also thank uh, AeroAccess and Dr. Kuman for organizing uh, these, um, these events, which are really very, very important in order to, to show what we do in terms of research and innovation to our key strategic partners in the world and to see how we can uh, work together even more than what uh, we already do. And that uh, paves the way to the key messages that uh, I would like to pass in this uh, intervention that I have the honor to to, to do during this uh, seminar. Um, it, it was already mentioned previously um, by by our air access colleague that uh, international cooperation is the way forward i retain this word that what was said yesterday in the in the webinar was that international cooperation is the way forward and uh, uh, what is happening nowadays in the world the covid crisis shows uh, showed and should continue to show that uh, we cannot uh, uh, go ahead uh, on our own. We need to cooperate with each other. We need to put strengths together in order to tackle the global societal challenges. In the, in the presentation, Dr. Kuman also mentioned the importance of working on other, on other areas. That's what the EU is doing, such as the digital, the Green Deal, and I will get back to that. So that is my first point, uh, how important is uh, uh, international cooperation uh, in this uh, current situation, even more than before. And the second point, uh, which, uh, uh, which was also mentioned by uh, His Excellency Ambassador Ugo Astuto, was the fact that uh, research and innovation, it's not only important in itself, it's not in, in cooperating, on uh, research issues, it's not only important for the benefits of science, but it is also important in order to create concrete um, actions, to have concrete actions that uh, will fit in into our bilateral cooperation. It was mentioned by the ambassador, and I would not uh, repeat it, uh, that uh, in the latest summits that the European Union uh, had uh, with, uh, with India, uh, Research um, and innovation were um, at the highlight of the agenda of our political leaders, not only in terms of words, but in terms of uh, concrete uh, um, initiatives. I still remember that uh, one of the times that I had planned to come to India in my function as Director for International Cooperation, and I couldn't do at that time, not because of the COVID, but because, uh, allow me to say something personal, I had a broken foot. Uh, we, we, we were supposed to, to launch a 30 mil, mil, million of euros flagship for research in, and innovation cooperation in the field of water. And at the same time, we were signing, uh, um, I, I, had to, I had to be there for signing a new, in, an agreement with the European Re uh, Research Council. And that, uh, I remember, was uh, well, the key, um, the key elements of what was uh, agreed at that summit at the time. But now let's get back to today. Uh, what I would like to say is that uh, um, you heard from my words how much uh, we are committed to international cooperation in research and innovation. Of course, I am the director for international cooperation and it goes without saying that I'm committed, but uh, um, it's, it, the European Commission, especially now since last year, since uh, uh, the president, Ursula von der Leyen, took over the leadership of the Commission, really attaches great, great importance to um, our international cooperation in research and innovation, likewise in other areas of the EU action and policies. Let me say that uh, with uh, President van der Leyen, um, the aim is that uh, the European Commission is, uh, a, has a more geopolitical approach and uh, has, uh, plays a stronger role in the world. But also um, there, is a, there is an expression that I like very much, the fact that uh, there are no boundaries between internal policies and external policies, which we can say also in a different way, saying that uh, what we do with, uh, with uh, what we call internal policies like the research policy, 
builds our external action. And uh, against this background, uh, we will be launching the next research and innovation framework program, uh, which uh, is currently being finalized. This uh, will be called the Horizon Europe program. It will cover the period from 2021 to 2027. And it follows up on the uh, Horizon 2020 program, which is being phasing out in that, um, in that, uh, in that period. The, um, the Horizon Europe program uh, translates in concrete terms this vocation of uh, further increasing the willingness to cooperate with our key strategic partners in the world. The program will, uh, will remain open and uh, will be based on, a, on what we say, what we call a revamp the strategy for international cooperation, which is based on um, using our activities in order to deliver on the key priorities of the European Commission, which are the ones that were already mentioned by me and by the previous speakers, related to the Green Deal, related to the digital agenda, related to global health, of course, and even more with the COVID, and also related to innovation. So this, um, the, this, our international cooperation should be more focused in delivering in these uh, strategic areas and uh, also based on, uh, on having, uh, um, on enhancing our activities, our joint activities with those strategic partners such as India. Now, um, as I mentioned, the Horizon Europe program is still being finalized. So I will not be able to, to go into, into all the details, but key messages is that it is basically a continuation of the Horizon uh, Europe, Horizon 2020 program with, uh, much, with, with, with a stronger focus on, the, on those sectors that I mentioned, the Green Deal, the digital um, agenda, the global health and innovation. That's the first point. It remains open to the participation of researchers from outside Europe, so open to the participation of all of you researchers who are listening to this webinar today. Um, and then um, it will also remain a, a very important program in terms of budget. We don't have uh, the final figure on the budget because, as I mentioned, negotiations are still ongoing. But uh, if, we, um, if we remember the order of magnitude, of the Horizon uh, a Europe program, which uh, is of around 80 billion of euros, you can imagine that uh, we are speaking of amounts which are really big and uh, we will remain in Europe with, uh, um, we will still have with Horizon Europe, the bigger EU, uh, the, the bigger research and innovation multilateral program in the world. It will be structured on three pillars, um, taking, um, also um, the, the structure from Horizon 2020. The first pillar will, uh, is related to open science for excellence. The second pillar is related to global challenges. And the third pillar is related to open innovation and uh, it will see the creation of a European uh, research, a European Innovation Council. So the Research Council already exists now with the Horizon Europe, there will be the launching of the European Innovation Council. The funding rules will largely remain the same as under Horizon 2020, um, and also the, 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 the program, the grants which will be allocated are based on a robust international uh, peer review. In terms of the, um, of the specific uh, uh, opportunities that this program uh, offers uh, for enhancing cooper scientific cooperation with India, I already mentioned that there is a general opening of the program uh, so that uh, you Indian researchers can participate to almost all the activities which will be launched under the Horizon uh, Europe program. And, uh, if uh, uh, the negotiations are concluded as expected by the end of the year, the first work programs which will launch the calls under Horizon Europe should be launched in the spring next year, something around April. So participation to the specific calls, but also um, building on the engagement that you, Indian scientists, already have in the multilateral forum 
for example, uh, um, the Mission Innovation, which India participates, the International Bioeconomic Forum, the SEPI, the Coalition on Epidemic Preparedness Innovation, these uh, uh, multilateral fora will have uh, an important uh, uh, role to play in the next program, and uh, you as Indian researchers can, can be part, uh, part of all that. Of course, uh, um, there is uh, something which is very important and I would like to stress uh, as, uh, in, uh, as uh, one of the concluding remarks of my intervention is that uh, there is in Europe the political willingness to cooperate internationally, political willingness to enhance cooperation with India, key partner for us. And again, I would like to, to, thank the, to thank the European delegation and in particular Tanya Frederiksen for the amazing work that she has done during the last years, the last four years, which um, resulted also in, in an increase of uh, the visibility of the program in India and, uh, and uh, also in, uh, in promoting uh, new initiatives uh, that uh, we have been able to launch. Um, so, uh, full political willingness on our side, uh, mobilization of all colleagues, the instrument that we, we, we have, the Horizon Europe instrument. Now, on your side, what, what is needed? <laughs> it's needed, of course, that you are aware of this possibility. It's needed that you do want to cooperate with Europe, as I do um, hope that you do because it's really important that we get forces together but it's also needed that uh, in India are set up uh, co-funding mechanisms which will support the participation of you the scientists to the um, to the Horizon Europe uh, uh, program. In uh, Horizon 2020 we have seen in concrete terms the big effect of the co-funding mechanism with India the co-funding mechanism which were set up in India under Horizon 2020 allowed to engage in research for cleaner water and wastewater management, renewable energy and health research. And in addition, uh, we are now uh, working on a co-funded initiative on the Green Deal. So it is important also that uh, this co-funding continues in order for you Indian researchers to be able to have the means to participate in this fantastic opportunity which is uh, um, offered to Horizon uh, Europe. Uh, my colleagues uh, from the, 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 the Directory General of Education of the European Commission will speak later about the Maris Dodosca Curie actions, so I will not, um, I will not um, uh, detail the opportunities that are offered under those very important actions, just to say that they will remain part of Horizon Europe. And of course, as I mentioned also at the beginning of my intervention, when, uh, when I said that I was supposed to go to India some time ago for signing an arrangement with the European Research Council, I also um, would like to, to say that uh, there, again, we have been advancing very well and uh, we are now um, about, uh, um, about uh, signing another uh, arrangement with the European Research Council with the Indian Council of Social Sciences and Research. And that would be very important because Indian researchers in this field, then when the arrangement will be signed soon, may temporarily join an European Research Council team in Europe. And I think this is a great opportunity that, uh, that uh, we have put in place for cooperation. And I also would like to thank the Indian Council of Social Sciences and Research for being so active in uh, discussing with the ERC for the signing of this implementing arrangement. So with that, uh, I hope that uh, I've been able to send you um, my, the, the key messages that uh, should then uh, guide uh, the, the, the discussions during this uh, important uh, research and innovation, uh, European Research Innovation Day, to, to make you feel our enthusiasm for cooperating uh, with India, uh, to be clear of the fact that the enthusiasm is uh, accompanied by concrete means, and I really hope that uh, we all together can uh, fully tap the possibilities uh, that are in place. With that, I would like to thank you very much for your attention and wish a very fruitful discussion today.
thank you so much, Christina. Um, I think for those that listened to you, they really have a good grasp you now and can be reassured that we will continue to cooperate with India on research and innovation. You really given the big lines to come, but those are the key ones, and that is the ones that we should work on. Uh, and also, I think what we said and should take away from your intervention is that for Europe, India is a strategic partner. And that will also be the partners with whom we will privilege cooperation in, in, in the coming years. So a very big thank you. Uh, so I got several messages while you were speaking saying, uh, at least virtually we have our uh, big boss in, in India. So we really try to have you still coming, but uh, so good that we could catch up to this virtual uh, session for which more than 500 people registered. So this shows that there is really an appetite between in India for cooperation with, uh, with Europe. So I would thank you also to continue your commitment for open horizon Europe cooperation with India. And we will reciprocate that with good uh, proposals and uh, areas of cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christina, for this excellent and inspiring talk. Also from your access side, we are very happy and honored to have you virtually with us. And we are sure the physical visit uh, will come soon. And um, we also thank you for this very excellent and uh, explanation about the policy context of Horizon Europe and also providing us the novelties and the rationale behind uh, the new program compared to the old one. So uh, now, uh, Christina already has mentioned, we have uh, our dear colleagues from the Maurice Gorowska Career Actions Unit with us, who will also now give us an introduction presentation about the new uh, program on the Horizon uh, Europe. So Thierry Deval and uh, Claire Morel are here with us. Uh, welcome again, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you very much. You, you can hear me? Very well, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Thank you very much for inviting us uh, for this uh, information event. Thank you to the Euro Access Office and to the EU delegation in India. Uh, I'm Claire Morel. I'm the head of the unit uh, in the European Commission in charge of managing the um, Marie Sklodowska Curie Action, so the MSCA. And I'm here today with my colleague uh, Thierry Devar, who is in charge of uh, international cooperation in my unit. Um, as you have heard uh, already uh, through the uh, introduction that was made by uh, Christina Rousseau, the time to make this um, presentation, to have this information day, uh, is very well chosen because we are about to launch a new generation of program in the framework of uh, Horizon Europe, which is the EU program for research and innovation, and the uh, MSCA, the Marie Sklodowska Curie Action, are part of it. Uh, so there will be a new new uh, round of uh, calls uh, launched in spring and it's good that you uh, um, get acquainted with these actions so that you will be prepared uh, to uh, apply uh, when, uh, when the calls uh, are published. Uh, you have heard um, a number of big uh, priorities uh, for, 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 for the EU, but not only for the EU, I think uh, global priorities that were mentioned by Mrs. Rousseau, like uh, the green transition, the, the digital transition, and all of these uh, can be covered by the MSCA program. So the, this is, um, but before I go into maybe the details of the action, I'd like to say that after my presentation and the presentation from my colleague Thierry, you will have testimonies from alumni, uh, from, uh, from the MSCA program, from people, researchers who have been involved in the different actions and can uh, testify and can report on their experience. And I think probably they are the best ambassadors for the program because they can uh, explain uh, 
from their own ex experience um, what it was uh, for them to be involved in, in the program. So what is the MSCA about? It's, a, it's the EU program, the EU flagship program. It's not new. Huh? It was uh, started about 30 years ago, uh, which supports and funds the uh, mobility, the training and the career development of researchers from all over the world through a number of different actions uh, and notably through the funding of excellent doctoral programs but also postdoctoral fellowships and collaborative projects so it offered different types of opportunities for researchers at all stages of their career so we start with uh, doctoral candidates who can uh, be enrolled in uh, international doctoral programs, up to more experienced uh, researchers who can be involved in collaborative projects or receive um, postdoctoral uh, fellowships. The, uh, our intention through this program is really to stimulate international cooperation. So within uh, Horizon uh, 2020 and Horizon Europe, the MSCA is the most international um, action. So this is the one that attracts uh, the most, uh, the highest number of international partner, partners, both international, uh, I would say, individual researchers, but also institutions. We promote very much the uh, cooperation with the non-academic sector, so cooperation between universities, but also industry, uh, small and medium enterprises, but also all sorts of other organizations like uh, hospitals, non-governmental uh, organizations, any, uh, let's say, side of a society that is interested uh, in participating in uh, research and innovation projects. Uh, it's what we call a bottom-up program. So it means that we do not prescribe or we do not impose any discipline, any particular dis discipline. It is up to those who are applying, uh, whether they are institutions or whether they are individual researchers, it is up to them to decide what the topic of their research should be. And they will be selected on the basis of the excellence of their project, the relevance and the impact of that research. So it can be any field. Uh, it promotes as well a uh, very attractive uh, working and employment condition. So uh, all our researchers, even the um, youngest or the less experienced one, have, um, uh, let's say, working contract. They contribute to uh, social security, uh, pension, etc. And the, the financing rates are quite interesting. And our intention is to have an impact not only on individuals, but also on institutions and uh, structures uh, involved in the program. Now you see the uh, program as it stands now, but my colleague uh, Thierry uh, Devar will um, explain what we are um, planning to launch next year. You will see that the actions will remain more or less the same. They will, we, our intention is just to change their name to make them maybe more, more easily to understand, especially uh, for researchers who do not, who are not used to uh, our um, to, to to the programs, to make them to make these actions more accessible. So for the time being, we have four types of actions. As you see, since 2014, we have reached out or we have funded the the training mobility of uh, over 65,000 researchers, including 25,000 PhDs. You will see that. Uh, I'll give you some statistics later on on the participation of India in the program. You will see that the program is already well known in, in Africa, in Africa, sorry, in India. And um, you will see as well, uh, and it's not mentioned in this on this slide, that we have uh, uh, funded since 2014 more than 1,000 uh, joint uh, doctoral programs. So now on this slide, you see the number of Indian researchers who have been funded through the program since uh, it was launched, uh, in this uh, version of the program in 2014. So you see that we have more than 1,600 researchers. Uh, a third of them are, are women. And they are mostly, when they come to Europe, they mostly do their research in the UK, Germany, France, Italy, and the Netherlands. 
before you ask the question maybe about the participation of the UK in the future program, since it's, uh, let's say, one of the preferred uh, research destination for Indian researchers, we are still negotiating with the United Kingdom their participation in the future Horizon uh, Europe program. We hope very much that they can join as of the beginning of next uh, year. Uh, we have also not only individual researchers, but also organizations uh, taking part in 23 projects. So those can be doctoral programs, they can be RISE projects, which are staff exchanges projects, but also co-funded projects. And the most active Indian organization, you can see them, it's the uh, Nehru University, National Institute of Oceanography, the, National, the Indian Institute of Science, and the Indian Institute of Technology in Bombay. Um, this is a bit more complex, uh, maybe graphic, but it's just to show you the, uh, where Indian researchers have been going their preferred uh, say destination when they do their research in the framework of the MSCA. As I said, UK is the uh, first uh, destination followed by, um, by Germany, France and, and Italy, and this is broken down by uh, the types of actions. So you will see that um, we have a high number of uh, young researchers, so uh, doctoral candidates who are involved in our projects, but we also have uh, some individual researchers at postdoctoral level. Um, as I said, the uh, MSCA is a bottom-up program. Now, can you go back to the, uh, yeah, the last one? <laughs> it's a bottom-up program which covers, yes, the one before, yes, thank you, um, which covers any uh, field of, um, can you add the, um, the leg legend, yes, the uh, fields. Yeah, it doesn't appear on the on this uh, on the slide, so it's not easy for you to see what these um, let's say this uh, chart represents. But it's 32% uh, uh, are in the field of engineering, and 22% of all researchers involved in the program are in uh, I think it's in life science, and the rest is spread across other research uh, areas. Next one. Yes, those, uh, as I said, you will hear uh, testimonies from a few uh, alumni who are involved or who have been involved in MSCA projects. And uh, what they often tell us is that it's, uh, being involved in an MSCA project is a um, very enriching experience, that it brings the possibility to work not only with intern within international teams, but also to be uh, exposed to a lot of different types of organizations, including from the non-academic uh, field. And also, uh, uh, as you can see, that it uh, allows and it offers quite uh, generous financial support. Now, um, I will soon give the floor to my colleague Thierry, who will tell you what um, the program will look like under Horizon Europe. Um, the uh, Maris Klodowska Curie Action will remain an important program of uh, Horizon Europe. It's part of what we call Pillar 1, which is the excellent uh, pillar of the, uh, of the uh, new program. Yeah, next one, yes. And uh, it uh, will offer, will continue to offer uh, five different types of actions. My colleague Thierry will now um, present these different actions to you and explain you what are the, the conditions to participate. He will give you as well information on the, um, the, the more information on when the new calls will be launched. As I said, you still have a little bit of time to prepare. So you see that we will continue under MSCA to fund uh, doctoral networks with, with fellowships for uh, doctoral candidates from all over the world. We will continue to offer post-doctoral uh, fellowships to more experienced researchers, uh, staff exchanges as well, for not only for researchers, but also for um, uh, technicians, for management staff, administrative staff. It's an interesting uh, scheme that we have as well, and it's the most international part uh, uh, of our actions. We also have a co-funded action for doctoral programs and post-doctoral uh, fellowships, and an action 
um, for outreach to citizens. But now we leave the floor to Thierry, who will guide you through these different actions. Thank you. Yes, hello. Uh, thank you. Um, well, my, my, my internet connection is a bit unstable and I was disconnected every time I use a video. So if you don't mind, I will, I will skip it. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me. Um, uh, yes, we clear. can. Okay, great. Uh, all right. So, um, well, first of all, uh, well, good afternoon to everybody. Um, you know, thank you for attending. Uh, as Claire mentioned, um, we are very happy to have this webinar because uh, India is a very, very important partner for, for, for us. You saw the figures. We have more than 1,600 uh, Indian researchers involved in the program. Um, which is uh, in terms of number just uh, behind China, but you know almost at the same volume of China. So definitely uh, one of our main uh, international partner. Uh, I will just focus here on the three main actions which are relevant uh, for Indian stakeholders, uh, both individual researchers and um, organizations. And the first one, uh, which attract most of Indian researcher, is what was called in Horizon 2020 innovative train, training networks, and that will become in Horizon Europe MSEA doctoral networks. So, as Claire explained, well, what we've tried to do is to further simplify, streamline the actions uh, in order to attract, to make it easier to attract, uh, you know, more uh, newcomers, uh, to make it more accessible. So to have only one actions to, to implement doctoral program with a, a very important focus on the training of researchers both regarding uh, training on research, but also on transferable skills to increase our employability. And on top of the doctoral, on the standard doctoral programs, uh, the networks can take uh, two uh, specific forms, uh, industrial doctorates for uh, training and joint supervision in academia and the industry, and joint doctorates for a joint collaboration of uh, academia leading to double or multiple doctoral degrees. And in this case, we require not only the joint supervision, but of course also a joint selection. So these networks are collaborative research and training uh, um, uh, networks, which are implemented by uh, partnerships of uh, academic organizations, so universities, research institutions, and non-academic ones, which can be, of course, businesses, uh, but not only, uh, uh, any other, uh, you know, socioeconomic actors, um, NGOs, uh, hospitals, museums. Uh, we want to foster through these schemes, and notably through secondments, the collaboration between academic and non-academic organizations. Um, in terms of minimum um, compositions, uh, so the network should include at least three independent legal entities from three different EU member states or associated countries, with a minimum one being an EU member state. And on top of this minimum, any entity from any third country can join. Uh, the target group is, of course, doctoral candidates. So here again, the, the definition uh, has been simplified. Uh, we, 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 we target only research researchers without a PhD at the date of the recruitment. In terms of uh, size, um, uh, we've reduced the size of, of the projects in comparison to uh, Horizon 2020. Uh, the size is up to 360 person months, so basically um, uh, corresponding to a maximum of 10 fellows for three years. And we give incentive of 180 additional per performance 
for the projects that wish to implement joint or industrial doctorates. So the duration is maximum 48 months, while the fellowship has a maximum of 36 months. So in short, uh, the organizations when selected uh, have one year to organize the project, to organize the recruitment process, and to recruit fellows uh, up to 36 months. Seven months uh, are, uh, of course, not only allowed, but encouraged. They can take place anywhere in the world, in any organizations, provided uh, they don't last up to one third of the fellowship duration. And we have an additional requirement for industrial doctorates where we, we require that the fellow spend 50% of his time in the non-academic sector. Uh, a, a novelty for, for, for those of you who are uh, familiar with, uh, with the current scheme is that now uh, the industrial partner can be in the same country as the academic host organizations. In terms of calls, uh, all this has really to be still to be confirmed. It's very provisional. Um, you see that we will have one call per year, um, and uh, the call opening will be uh, early May and will close mid-November uh, each time. What we're uh, considering also is to have some restriction on resubmission that will, of course, apply the, uh, you know, in the second year and in 2022 only uh, for applications receiving a score below 80% in the first year. In terms of um, budget, uh, well, uh, calculating the budget of a doctoral network is very, like other MSCA uh, project, is very straightforward because MSCA is based on unique contributions. So, which means that per person, per person month, we have uh, contributions to the individual researchers. So, you see in this case, living allowance, uh, mobility allowance, family allowance, if applicable, special needs for, for uh, researchers with, with disabilities. And also, we plan the long-term leave allowance um, in case of uh, parental leave or sickness, for instance. And we have institutional unit contributions, so budget that, that funding that goes to the institution to cover the, the, the reserves, the, the, the research, the training, the networking, and also the management, of course, of, uh, of, 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 the, of the project. So we ha you have here for each category the different um, amount for the doctoral networks. Uh, the second big category uh, is, um, you know, the, the postdoctoral fellowships um, in Horizon Europe, uh, which is a former individual fellowship in Horizon 2020. So here uh, we will, of course, continue to support in postdoctoral research. Uh, important to flag that this is open to researchers of any nationality. So researchers from any nationality can apply together with a beneficiary. Uh, what we aim to promote is really what we call the three I, which means interdisciplinarity, intersectoral, and international experience. So we, we, we try to, to, to push for these three dimensions to be included in postdoc fellowship, in our MSC postdoc fellowship. Uh, a very important aspect is that it's bottom-up, which means the, 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 the scientific uh, topics are freely chosen by the, 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 the researchers. Uh, we are fully open to all research domains. And a novelty uh, in Horizon Europe is that uh, this will also include civilian nuclear research activities uh, as those covered by the Euratom Treaty. Uh, we have only two destinations, so European and global postdoctoral fellowships. So European for researchers wishing to move within or come into Europe, and global uh, postdoctoral fellowships 
for researchers based in EU or associated countries and moving to um, countries uh, around the world. Segments are, um, are allowed in any country. And another novelty um, in Horizon Europe is that as we want to promote this uh, intersectoral dimension, we uh, provide an incentive for an additional period of up to six months for placement in the non-academic sector, which normally should take, uh, should happen at the end of the project. So there is provision for this additional period. Regarding the duration for European fellowships, the maximum is 24 months, pending, of course, this uh, additional place placement of six months. And for global fellowship, uh, the maximum duration is 36 months, 12 to 24 for the outgoing phase, so going outside the Europe, and a 12 months mandatory return phase in Europe. Um, so, as I said, well, our objective is really to, to develop skills, you know, for, uh, you know, academia and outside academia through incentive re related to the additional placement and to give also, uh, you know, a stronger focus on career development through uh, the submission and update of a career development plan, plan for individual researchers and also for providing guidelines uh, to supervisors to try to exchange best practice on, on supervision as well. A big issue we have with this scheme is uh, its success, which means that, um, well, we have to, to manage the increasing demand for, for it. Uh, in the last call, uh, we had more than 10,000 applications uh, and we are able to fund only, uh, you know, a very low fraction of it, about um, 14 percent so we need to 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 increase the success rate on one end and another important um, factor is the fact that we need to ensure a quality evaluation so imagine by receiving more than 10,000 proposals we have to uh, involve uh, thousands of uh, experts uh, all across the world and the process is be becoming unmanageable, unmanageable to, to, to reach, uh, you know, quality evaluation. So we are thinking of uh, some restriction. Uh, one of it is to limit the research experience, which means that we would um, limit the scheme to researchers having a scientific age of six years, for instance. Uh, we will limit it to um, researchers actually uh, having a PhD degree and we will include also uh, res uh, resubmission restrictions below certain quality thresholds. So this is currently uh, being discussed uh, with our member states, but these are measures we, we, we are envisaging to, 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 to reduce uh, the demand. You have also here an indication of the plan um, timing of the calls. So between uh, mid-April to mid-September for both years. Uh, same regarding uh, the budget. Uh, this is based on unit cost and uh, similarly to, uh, to what you have in doctoral networks, you have here the indications uh, for the different cost categories and salaries for uh, the fellowships. Finally, uh, the third uh, scheme which is relevant is a staff exchange, which is a former RISE scheme in uh, Horizon 2020. So this is, you know, for us, very relevant at, uh, at international level. Uh, it's uh, the most international action of MSCA uh, in terms of uh, participation. And it's easiest uh, in the sense that we are only funding here uh, the mobility between different partners uh, across the globe. Uh, and we, we only fund this mobility in terms of added value to an existing uh, collaborative research activity or a new one. Uh, 
you will see uh, in the course that we only, uh, you know, we don't pay salary here. We only pay the cost related to this uh, mobility. Uh, this mobility, uh, we, 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 we want to push it again uh, for this free eye approach, you know, international, intersectoral and interdisciplinary. Um, we want to to yeah to, to 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 give emphasis on the added value of the of the collaboration uh, itself, and what's new here in comparison to the to Horizon 2020 is that we will allow same sector segments, so not on, notably between uh, academia, uh, if the segment has an interdisciplinary character. Uh, so this is a big novelty, and we will also reduce the number of uh, persons uh, to make the project uh, uh, more manageable. So the, the, the maximum persons that will be funded uh, will be 360. So here, in terms of budget, you see that the contribution is just on top of allowance, uh, 2,300 euro uh, per person month and also the special needs allowance. And of course, there are still uh, institutional contribution for the research, training, and networking uh, cost and the management of the action. Uh, here I've summarized so the, 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 the current planning, but this is still to be confirmed. Uh, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are really discussing internally. We are discussing with our um, member states about this planning. Um, uh, which creates, uh, you know, some some worries because many deadlines are, are close together. So this is not, uh, you know, an easy situation. So this is still to be confirmed. Uh, just to indicate also, um, you know, main channel of information. Uh, of course, our dedicated website. Uh, the participant portal of the program where, where, where you find all relevant um, documents uh, or the official documents and you, you, you get guided for the application process. Your access portal, but I think you will, uh, you know, you will discuss this uh, later. Uh, also, something very important is the uh, India chapter of the uh, Marie Curie Alumni Association. So if you want to liaise, uh, you know, with this uh, association, this is uh, something, you know, we, we, we recommend a lot. And we have, of course, you, you know, our contact, our, uh, you know, functional email, if you have any question. And that's end my uh, presentation. Thanks a lot. Claire, uh, Thierry, thank you so much for uh, this very informative uh, presentation about the Maurice Kudoska Crew Action Programs. What's coming up, as you said, there is a rebranding of the programs in terms of names. And um, I think this is really uh, one of the first hand uh, webinars where uh, researchers can know about these new uh, uh, schemes on the Horizon Europe uh, with the Maurice Kudoska Crew Action. And we have um, uh, a couple of questions ready for you from the audience. So I uh, would li like to start the Q&A session with you now, if that's okay. Yes, that's okay. We are both online. You're both there. Wonderful. Okay. So uh, one question was if uh, um, the MSCA fellowships also opens up opportunities for secondments outside the EU. Thierry, can you take it? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, I don't see my. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh. Yes. Definitely. So this is uh, really uh, you know a novelty um, from Horizon 2020. So uh, segments can take place uh, anywhere in the world. Okay. Uh, the only limitation we have, I mean, even for uh, global fellowships, so for um, uh, researchers um, based in Europe, which who, by the way, can be of Indian uh, nationality, uh, you know, because long-term residents, for instance, are, are eligible. Uh, so the only thing is that 
for the mandatory return phase in Europe, we don't allow their secondments. But for the rest, secondments are uh, allowed uh, anywhere in the world at any time. Oh, uh, provided they don't, uh, you know, they are they don't last more than one third of the total fellowship duration. Mm, okay, good. Um, another question, uh, Thierry and Claire, was uh, regarding the COVID pandemic right now, which we're facing, and if there are any restrictions to mobility for researchers who are going to be funded by the MSCA programs. I'm planning, of course, to go to a European uh, host institution. Like, what is the current scenario for potential uh, applicants for uh, 2021? I think that's the scenario we're looking at. Yeah. Well, for the time being, um, as you can imagine, the program has uh, had to um, show a lot of flexibility. Uh, we have uh, researchers who had to uh, delay uh, their research, to reorganize it. So we have allowed for a lot of flexibility within the existing program. We are flexible as well in terms of the, the uh, compulsory mobility rules, obviously. So um, our intention in the future is, is to continue to have a strong um, focus on mobility, but we need to adapt. So um, we will, I mean, if mobility is not possible, it can be replaced by virtual mobility, by teleworking. The plans can be adapted, can be changed. So we are fully, uh, I mean, we show full, full flexibility in these regards. But uh, we do not intend to replace um, the, uh, let's say, the, 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 the physical mobility by virtual mobility. Only, of, of course, when it's, it's not possible because uh, the borders are closed. We, we just need to adapt uh, and see how the situation evolves. Of course, um, mobility is, is the core to these programs and uh, you absolutely uh, said it right, uh, Claire, that flexibility has to be part of, uh, of uh, this uh, new mobility programs and um, that's very good to hear that there is a room for flexibility for researchers applying for the Maurice Goff's career action programs. Another question which is coming from some of our Indian uh, universities here is like how to attract European researchers to Indian universities through the MSCA uh, programs. We know that Indians are performing very well when it comes to the IF and the ITNs, but the other way around, the traffic from Europe to India, how can we strengthen that any any tips on that? <laughs> well, maybe I will uh, give the, the, the word afterwards to Thierry because he's our international expert. But I would say that uh, by starting maybe to take part in projects like RISE, you know, which is the staff exchange uh, action, which um, is the most international uh, action within the MSCA because it's quite easy to participate. So if you are already in a network, you start maybe with RISE, you start to develop um, contacts, networks, um, and to make your, uh, I mean, your, your university, your research center better known. Um, I, and and, and it's a way as well to show the richness and the excellence of uh, uh, RNI uh, capacities in India. So the, the, the RISE action is probably the, uh, in the future it's called staff exchanges, is the first step. It's the easiest way to enter into MSCA uh, because as well the uh, success rate is higher. And it's a way to develop contacts, be known um, and, uh, and attract um, researchers and institutions. I don't know if Thierry, you want to say something else? Yeah, well, uh, maybe to say that uh, this is definitely something we plan to, to address with, with Indian authorities. Um, I mean, we have two issues because um, indeed, you know, the, the, the staff exchange, I mean, the former RISE uh, scheme is, is a very good, uh, um, you know, uh, entry uh, means. Uh, but the fact is that India is not eligible to receive funding. And we, we saw the, uh, you know, the, the participation uh, from Indian organization dropped, you know, from f 7 to Horizon 2020. So we need a kind of, uh, you know, uh, matching fund mechanisms to try to, to trigger more uh, RISE applications. Uh, if you look at, uh, you know, the imbalance in terms of individual fellowships, 
uh, well, we have uh, 360 uh, Indian fellows hosted in, uh, you know, in Europe through, through MSCA. Mm -hmm. We have only one, uh, you know, uh, from Europe hosted in, in India. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's self-speaking. So we need, you know, to trigger more cooperation through RISE. We, we also need to have more promotion of um, opportunities in India, in India and opportunities in Indian University. So we must work with Indian authorities on this common plan. Yeah, I think the, the RISE scheme is, uh, is a key also for Indian institutions to uh, establish partnerships and be part of a consortium with European partners and then through that uh, uh, enable possibilities for their students and researchers to apply for those positions or also to have that uh, possibility to of uh, um, uh, moving between the two uh, continents. Um, we have of course also uh, one of the uh, one of our speakers is a coordinator of a RISE project, uh, Professor Fernandez. Uh, he will be shortly also presenting uh, uh, his project. Uh, we have uh, a couple of more questions. Uh, I would like to take them uh, uh, with you. Uh, like one of the questions I think uh, most are interested is what is the timeline after the submission of the application, like uh, the evaluation, uh, then announcing, uh, you know, who, uh, if you are eligible for the grant. So could you just give a, 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 a brief overview about the timeline, like from the day of submission to getting accepted? Okay, Thierry, do you want, to, I'm not sure it was part of your slide. Do you want to take this question? Uh, yeah, uh, well, it, it's five months uh, normally uh, after the closure of the call. Five months, okay, that, that's uh, I think um, not, not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there were questions about uh, the uh, career restart and reintegration uh, panels. Will they still continue to exist in the in the in the Mariskovsk uh, postdoc program in under Rice in Europe? I'm not sure if, if that was mentioned. Yeah. Oh, I think. Yeah. Please go ahead. Go ahead, Thierry. Uh, sorry, I, I I'm not sure. You you speak about what the reintegration? The reintegration yes, the, the, the restart yeah. pan panel under IF. Will yes. that be part in the new uh, MSCA postdoc yes. program? So, so, so in fact, it will be different than in uh, Horizon 2020 because it won't be subject to specific panels as, as it was the case in Horizon 2020. Uh, what we've introduced, um, you know, as we plan, you know, to limit, uh, you know, the scientific age of, uh, you know, of, of uh, researchers, uh, to probably six years, um, what, what is planned currently, but again, subject to change, eh? we, you know, uh, um, is that all the years uh, spent outside Europe for research will not be counted, and same uh, related to uh, the time spent outside research for any reason, so for instance, for maternity leave, for instance, would not be counted, you know, in the scientific age in order to keep incentives for uh, those career restart and reintegration panel. I mean, uh, not panel, but cases. Mm. Okay. So it means that the policy objectives are the same. We want to yeah. favor integration, but it will be done through other means. Okay, okay. Um, we take two more questions before we move to the, the testimonials. Um, one question was uh, regarding the resubmission. So does that mean that resubmission is uh, uh, restricted for the same proposal or resubmission by the same applicant? It's, uh, if it's for individual fellowship, it's the same applicant. I don't know if the question was related to individual fellowships or to postdoctoral yeah. fellowship. Or, yes, or the, yes. To the, to the IF. Yeah, it's the same applicant with the same project, yes. Okay, okay. And uh, Claire and Thierry, last question, uh, that's uh, with regard to RISE. Um, uh, do, do researchers get any family allowance? Is there any family allowance included in the RISE uh, pro programs? 
I don't think so, no, but Thierry can say, but I don't think this is foreseen. I mean, we are talking of, but maybe Thierry, can you take this? Yes, uh, yes, well, no, it's not planned, in fact, what, what, what you saw. Uh, you know, in RISE, it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's completely different because it's short-term secondments. Uh, you know, it's between one and six months. Uh, we don't pay the salaries, so no, we only pay, you know, a top-up allowance and special needs, uh, you know, for uh, researchers with, with disabilities. Okay. Uh, Claire and Thierry, merci beaucoup. Thank you so much uh, for this very informative and uh, very interesting uh, session. Now we move to actually the people who have received grants and also Tanya wants to uh, say something before we move to the next session. Tanya. Yeah. So, sorry to intervene, but uh, I also listen carefully. And I also personally would like to thank two dear colleagues of mine from Brussels that could connect today virtually, Claire and uh, Thierry, and uh, for this privileged uh, inside information that we could get in the new Marie Curie. Um, um, I wanted to say uh, that uh, there is something in the Indian newspaper every Sunday, and it reads, easy like Sunday morning. So it's a quiz. And uh, there was a quiz only about Marie Curie. So Marie Curie is a, a very well-known concept uh, in, uh, in India. And it said, uh, be less curious about people and more about ideas. What do you know about Marie Curie? So I think that, that uh, but I think uh, picking up on what Thierry said, it's more uh, the knowledge about individual fellowships uh, that is associated with the notion of Marie Slodowska Curie in the meantime, isn't it? And therefore, I would very much agree with uh, what uh, Claire said and also uh, Thierry in particular, that uh, first of all, you need to continue to promote your good product. And uh, we also saw that there is an underuse of the RISE uh, scheme. So it's very good that it continues and the conditions will be even more uh, uh, favorable and, uh, well, not favorable, but clearer and uh, bringing expertise to a, a research collaboration. So definitely, Thierry, as you said, that needs promotion and that needs also uh, a possibility of setting up co-funding, matching funding uh, for the Indians um, uh, to, to make them be partners of, uh, of, of a rise. And we will see in the next testimony that that was precisely uh, the issue. But I would also like uh, to say that there is another point in the Marie Slodowska uh, schemes that is very important and that is underused or un presumably also because of under-promoted, and that is the two-way mobility. Uh, the, the Marie Curie Sodowska action that also allows Europeans to come to Indians, uh, to India. And that is something that would tremendously strengthen also the research and scientific capacity in India, and in turn the collaboration. So for the future, those would be certainly two aspects of the promotion. If you ever can finally make it to India, that we should put high on, on, on the agenda. So thank you to allow me to intervene, to say a personal big thank you, and also some messages uh, for, for the future. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Tanya, for uh, this very uh, nice intervention and also emphasizing the two-way mobility which we should also focus on, not forget. Now we come to uh, some very interesting uh, speakers who have cracked actually the Maurice Grosker Career Action Grants. And first of all, I'd like to welcome Dr. Alfredo Ortiz Fernandez, a professor of electrical engineering at the University of Cantabria. And he's the coordinator of the MCA RISE funded project, Biotrafo. The project has created an international intersectoral network which uh, expands to current knowledge about the application of ester-based fluids in power transformers. Dr. Fernandez, welcome very much to our uh, session. Next, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Garima Singh. She is an MSCA fellow. Hello, uh, Garima, welcome. At the Observatoire de Paris in France, she has obtained her PhD in astronomy and astrophysics. 
from uh, the same institute, followed by a postdoc at NSAA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. Uh, six years of hands-on experience of working at the world-class observatories in California, and her professional goal is to lead the next generation exoplanet imagining instruments for the future extremely large telescopes. She has a life goal, which is to empower women, minorities, and support the education of underprivileged children. Garima, thank you very much for joining. Also, I would like to welcome Dr. Nana Sahib Thorat. He's an outstanding experienced researcher, currently working as a Marie Curie Fellow at the University of Oxford Medical Science Division. Dr. Thorat has a, is a two-time winner of the fellowship, so that's really an outstanding achievement. And uh, beyond that, he's an awardee of the European Commission's Innovation Radar Grand Prix of the Innovation Radar Prize 2020, and many other national and international acclaims are on his name. Thank you so much for joining, Dr. Thorat. Also, a warm welcome to Ms. Shruti Singh. She completed her MSc in Sustainable Transportation, Electrical Power Systems, and was an Erasmus Mundus student in uh, Spain at the University of Oviedo and the University of Nottingham in uh, the UK and University of Rome. So we have, uh, and she's uh, now a Maurice Graves Curie researcher under the ITN project, means she's a PhD candidate, um, means she has gone through a European mobility program. So that's very, uh, uh, we're very happy to know that. Then uh, last not but least, I would like to welcome uh, Ms. Lavanya Mahadevan. She has a master's in science from Linköping University in Sweden. And she was awarded the Walla Och Danielsson Scholarship funded by Svetbanken, which enabled her to conduct part of her thesis at the University of Pennsylvania in the US. After her master's, she worked as a research associate with the Jubilant Drug Discovery Solutions, a CRO based in Bangalore, India. She's also a Maurice Godofsky Curie Fellow, awardee and associated with the ITN Her Perco program. And she's working at the lab of Professor Dr. Ralf Erdmann at the Ruhr University in Bochum, Germany. So welcome uh, to all of you. And uh, I'd like Professor Fernandez uh, to begin with his presentation about his RICE uh, funded project. Okay, uh, thank you. I will try to, uh, are you hearing me? Yes. Yep. Okay, perfect. I will try to share my, Okay, I'm not sure. Yeah, we can see. Uh, okay, okay, perfect. Just put it in slide mode. Is is okay yes. now? Yeah. The view? Very, okay. Very good. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for for your invitation to to be with you today. Uh, I'm afraid that um, uh, my comments are only positive. Uh, on rise, um, I think it's a, a great, uh, great opportunity for everybody involved uh, in this kind of, uh, of projects. Uh, I would like to, to to talk a little bit about my my experience. That is uh, is very positive, as I said before. Okay, for us, uh, our this scheme is uh, I think that is a clear opportunity for for people to open to open uh, frontiers, to open possibilities. To, to know uh, to increase knowledge to to, to improve uh, careers opportunities so this is I think the, the main idea behind this uh, this this call and this is more or less what uh, I will try to, to, to show you okay so uh, these are my data if anybody in the audience uh, wants to contact me just for further information I'm I'm available for this kind of uh, uh, info. Uh, I'm uh, with the University of Cantabria for 20 years. Uh, I'm a professor. Um, in 10 years ago, more or less, we start with a research line that is the one that uh, is behind our our proposal that is about uh, biodegradable um, liquids for cooling in power in power transformers. This is the idea of our project. Okay. Before uh, this is uh, yes, some some comments about my previous my previous work, some numbers about the production, so doctoral thesis, uh, citations, number of journals, etc. And these are also my topics. Okay, my 
the, 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 the interesting uh, analysis uh, I did in, in the past and also, and also today. And also my my experience in international in international universities, okay, is is there. I think that is all this uh, long uh, history make me uh, able to, to 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 know people to to, to start this kind of uh, international international project. Okay, so also I have some contacts uh, in France to the, uh, my participation in international committees, International Electrotechnical Commission, European Commission for Electrotechnical uh, Standardization, or, or also SIGRE. Uh, okay, this is a little bit my my background. I did this background in 2018. We uh, we together with. Uh, uh, a number of people in the consortium, we uh, create this uh, GRIS proposal. Okay, this is the complete uh, name, raising knowledge, uh, developing technology for design and deployment of high performance uh, power transformers immersing biodegradable fluids. Okay, the short name is bio, uh, bio travel. Okay, we promote this in 2018, as I said, and are uh, under the RISE uh, call. And this proposal was just for a period of 36 uh, months, okay? Uh, the official start was in the 1st January 2019. So we are about uh, to finish the second, the second year. Uh, we have to say that uh, this uh, second year was a little bit special. Uh, we have to stop many of the options we had planned. So we will have a, a meeting uh, in the next weeks just to, to see how we reorganize the project for, for the future for the, because of the COVID, um, uh, uh, the COVID uh, is, uh, is also affecting this kind of uh, activities, this kind of, uh, of projects that is based on, on, the, on the mobility of, uh, of people. Yeah, so this was the proposal was uh, successful. I think that uh, as it was said before, uh, we sent this proposal about uh, April, uh, something like this, and we got uh, uh, the answer in June, July. I think I don't remember the sad date, but it was around June, uh, June, July. Okay. Uh, more things about uh, us, these are more or less the distribution of uh, people around the world in our consortium. As you can see, we have the core here in, in, in Europe, uh, some the different uh, countries we participate here from Europe, but we also have Turkey that is an associate country to, to Europe, so it's just the same, have the same uh, role that the rest of the European uh, countries. And we have third countries that are uh, Japan, Colombia, Peru, and Argentina. Okay, these are our um, third countries in the consortium. Initially, we have, um, we have an agreement with uh, an Institute of Science in, in India, but at the end we have some bureaucratic problems and at the end it was not possible the participation of this partner of India uh, was really a pity because it was a very uh, good uh, partner and was, uh, was really sad for, for us to stop this collaboration in this project with this uh, partner. We will see in the future if this is possible to enroll with this college from India in a uh, future, future proportion. Okay, let's name these uh, people here working hard in our project. These are the 13, um, the 13 uh, partners we have in the consortium. We have in red the ones that are uh, uh, not beneficiaries but partners. So are not from Europe but from other parts of the world. Okay, in black the beneficiary uh, partners, okay? My university, University of Cantabria, University Carlos III in Madrid, also in Spain. Uh, the number four is a company in, in Italy, okay? 
so it's non-academic, but uh, European, so beneficiary of this uh, of this call. We have University of Rome. Uh, we have also in Europe uh, uh, the, the 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 University Polish University Slaska, and we have Stuttgart University and also the University of Manchester. At the moment, we are. The professor in Manchester is moving to Exeter. Also in UK, uh, we will have to do this kind of administrative change. Okay? Uh, about the red ones, we have uh, very good colleagues in, in Argentina, in Universidad Nacional del Litoral. We have also colleagues in, in Peru, working with us in Colombia, in Japan, and also a company in, um, in Argentina. Okay? As our our project uh, is related with uh, transformers, so uh, we have a couple of manufacturers with us that are the third team, the the study of Terbeni in Argentina, and we have another one in, in Turkey. Okay, these are the two companies. Uh, no, no, we have three. Uh, in fact, we have also. Okay, so universities, academic. Uh, uh, academic part and we have no academic part in three cases with three components we have european as uh, beneficiary and we have partners international partners from other countries okay this is more or less what we can so and uh, the objectives of of these projects are more or less main ideas are in red for me to to, to remember uh, the objective, main objective of this uh, of this uh, project of this action is to create a network of experts. Okay, mainly in our case in two technical uh, in two technical fields, but this is I'm afraid the the idea of any of these actions uh, to create people with more knowledge that can be applicable in a future. The focus uh, I think that is clear in younger researchers, even when all people as me can participate and can enjoy this kind of options. I think the ones that get uh, more uh, benefits are young people working in on PSD, for example, are the ones that are going to get more opportunities. Uh, for all of us in, in this uh, project, I think that is a very good opportunity to see disseminate investigate uh, our research our results not only the scientific uh, community in conference but also to non specialized publics uh, this is something that the call promotes that we uh, tell others what we are working on okay and also something that we expect is clearly to create something new new services new 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 products okay these are technical outputs. We we always have to promote new geometries for these transformers with these biodegradable liquids, new tools, new software just to solve specific problems in an automatic way. This can be also an, an option. Uh, design of prototypes. We are going to create prototypes together with the manufacturers. Okay? New con constructive methodologies some technical objectives that this kind of projects have also uh, have to promote okay uh, benefits okay what we can get from from this surprise projects for the participation of uh, in this kind of projects i think that are clear that we are going to increase our knowledge we are going to know uh, more about uh, scientific tools uh, we are going to to, to know uh, to, to 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 deal with new equipment when we go to another partner. To, to to we are going to increase our knowledge for for sure. We are going to be exposed to, to different environments, research environments. What is going to be? We are going to be more rich in this in this way because we are going to understand how other people uh, try to solve the same problems, and this is something. Uh, very interesting in, in any case we are going to learn new research uh, methodologies new approach in different countries with different cultures that is, uh, is going to be something something great for everybody we have also a positive point that is the exchange of experience between senior researchers and young researchers this is something that is going to be always there the call promotes this kind of uh, I don't know, guidance uh, is something that is also 
part of the project. How senior guys are helping new people to find a way to find a, a future job, for example. Okay, and we have some uh, tools for doing all these things. That is uh, promoting workshops, seminars, attending conferences. So at the end, this is how we are going to foster, for example, communication skills of the people working with with us. Okay, this is I'm afraid my last slide. I think running out of time. Uh, and we at the end, what we can get in, in this kind of things in in terms of networking, we are going to create people that is can get. Uh, two ways, perhaps the way of uh, academic uh, companies or universities or whatever, or private companies, both are open after this, uh, this kind of participation or this kind of project. We are going to, to improve our uh, geographical mobility. This is, going to, this is going to be very good for our CV. Employers are going to, to give points for this, for sure. We are going to participate for sure also in management skills. We are going to see from inside how we have to report projects. We are going to write reports just for the European Union to, to, to know that we are going to do the work properly. We are going to see how uh, the, in, this, in all these environments, uh, people write proposals for new projects so new opportunities for the future for the people involved uh, that that is clear uh, from this we can uh, even uh, be part of the birth of new research uh, lines that can be also part of my my future so very very positive output from from the participation on, on any of the projects from the rise from the rise call so this is this is all, and I open for your questions if you like. Thank you so much, Dr. Fernandez. Uh, I think uh, you very clearly summarized the benefits of the Rice project, also in terms of uh, the broad participation, the global participation in this project, the possibility to uh, transfer knowledge, to gain knowledge, to broaden the experience of researchers, and to develop uh, new skills. Um, I was just curious about the current COVID-19 pandemic, how it has impacted uh, the, your uh, project now in terms of uh, staff exchange and mobility. Yeah. And how are you coping with that? Uh, yeah, uh, we can say that from March, uh, from March 2020, we start to stop. Uh, in that moment, we have some people that was uh, working in another institutions. These people was uh, at the moment expecting the evolution of the situation, but uh, as the evolution of the of the situation was not very good, um, we uh, slowly all these people that was in another institution returned to the return to the home university or home company. Okay. Uh, from that day, uh, we uh, all the secondments, all the uh, mobility plans were stopped uh, until uh, we have uh, the permission from the health uh, authorities to uh, return to the to the activity to the to the mobility of researchers from one from one uh, place to the other. We still have uh, work. We are working. Everyone is working in his uh, university. For example, we can work in dissemination. Uh, we can participate in conference. In summer, uh, we have intense uh, co um, collaborate uh, participation in um, in conferences. All these conferences were were virtual conferences using video conference. Uh, tools. So we still are doing things, but we are not uh, using the main tool of this call that is the mobility. So uh, we are about to, to decide in the steering committee of the project um, the, next, the next step. So as this is taking too much time, this situation, uh, I'm not sure if we are going to stop the project, 
just to continue the project when the circumstances are more more appropriate for 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 do, doing our job because have no sense from my point of view uh, to to work in your home university when you uh, I think that many of the network networking networking opportunities many of the positive things that we have to arise uh, if you are in your university you are not going to take advantage of this so. I'm afraid that uh, for us, uh, okay, my, my idea is to, to, to stop our project until we have a, a proper environment to continue the, with the activity. Uh, this is, I think, that uh, this is a, a, something that uh, the society is facing today, but uh, I'm afraid that this is not a problem for the participation of, uh, pro for preparing proposals for the future. I'm afraid that the rise is a perfect, uh, is a perfect opportunity for everybody to 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 improve um, knowledge and also capabilities, the skills, everything. Um, the problem is that the the specific moment that we are facing uh, today. But yeah, this is yes my my opinion on this. Thank you so much, Dr. Fernandez, and, I, and also yep. Claire was mentioning that. Of course, there has to be some flexibility now due to this unprecedented yeah. crisis. And yeah. uh, I think you, of course, many of the projects are facing similar uh, problems. Yeah. You mentioned uh, one uh, Indian institution originally was part of the application or the consortium, but then due to some bureaucratic issues couldn't yeah. join. I think something yeah. maybe, Tanya, which could be of interest to us to know what the challenges were. And maybe, Dr. Fernandez, we could. Uh, have a, a, a talk with you post uh, the webinar and yeah, find out yeah. maybe in the future how, how we could uh, you know eliminate some such kind of bureaucratic challenges which prevent Indian institutions to join. Yes. So thank you, Dr. Fernandez, for, um, for uh, coming in. Uh, we are now would like to also uh, have a, a talk with the other uh, MCA okay. uh, fellows and, um, and also please listen in. And if okay. you have something to, to uh, uh, come in, intervene with, we would be happy also to hear from you because you are you. so uh, a very knowledgeable when it comes to the M MCA programs. So, thank you. We have this uh, very nice group of Maurice Glasgow Curie fellows. Uh, uh, all of the four of you are in Europe right now. And uh, I would like to start with a question to Garima. Uh, Garima, uh, you're in Paris right now. And yes. We just wanted to know, like, how did you get to know about this fellowship, the MCA fellowship, and what was the motivation behind that for you to apply for it? Um, so first of all, uh, I would like to thank Your Access India for uh, their kind invitation and for giving me this opportunity to talk. And before I answer your question, I need to tell you a little story for one minute. <laughs> so sure. I work on a technology called Extreme Adaptive Optics, which is used to search and find an image planets outside of our solar system. And these planets are called exoplanets. So we literally take images of, uh, well, photographs of exoplanets. And the goal is to um, find uh, exo-Earth, so Earth 2.0. So I basically developed these instruments for the current uh, big telescopes, uh, ranging from five to 10, meter, 10 meters. Um, so this technology is flourishing well in the Western world. Uh, but unfortunately it does not exist in India yet. So one of my professional goals have always been to bring India uh, to the forefront of this um, uh, field. And uh, well, because it would be wonderful for me to see India proposing its own exoplanet hunting projects, either from ground or from space uh, telescopes. So, um, so it is incredibly important for me to uh, bridge this technological gap and uh, build meaningful collaborations with the European experts of the field. So this has been basically my uh, basic motivation. I uh, truly believe that it would be uh, beneficial both for Europe and for India to exchange expertise, ideas, and manpower to develop such technology for future large telescopes. Uh, so this is basically my motivation to have this, um, uh, you know, uh, to apply for this postdoctoral fellowship. And uh, I actually first learned about this uh, fellowship when I was doing my PhD um, um, 
uh, at Subaru Telescope in Hawaii five years ago. And to be honest, uh, at that point, I didn't feel confident enough to aim for such a prestigious fellowship. But for about like three years ago, I, um, I felt that I was more than ready to basically give a direction to my professional goal. So I proposed this uh, project with my French colleagues uh, to uh, basically ameliorate the uh, current state of the art uh, related with this exoplanet imaging instrumentation in the context of uh, Europeans extremely large telescopes. So, so I have been, I'm really grateful to have received this funding. Great, Karima. I think this is a very inspiring uh, story you're telling us and also the motivation behind also uh, not also giving back something to the home country, right? That you also feel that that's also needed, that research should also develop uh, in India as well. And I think you will definitely contribute to that. Uh, next, I would uh, invite uh, Nana Saheb, Dr. Nana Saheb, uh, to tell us a bit uh, like uh, what have been, what has been for you the main benefits of the MECA Fellowship and you uh, received it two times even. Please, you have to unmute your mic for that to answer. Yeah, thank you very much, Your Access India, <clears throat> for inviting, and it's a great opportunity for us to be uh, give our uh, experience with uh, uh, Indian uh, researchers. So it is nice opportunity for all of us. So it's a story started with uh, when I was in some European country on another fellowship and my mentor uh, in Ireland where I first entered, he advised me to go for the Mercury and first time I applied for Poland. And I was the first Indian who got uh, the Mercury in Poland that time. And I was the only one Mercury fellow in Poland uh, that time because Poland is widening country and nobody wants. Uh, in second time I applied for the UK and I got in Oxford. So. So it's a story and it's, uh, with experience. And I'm also a reviewer of uh, 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 evaluation panel member of Mercury Fellowship. And now I'm doing uh, reviewing uh, many proposals. So now I understand how panic to manage these all fellowships. So regardless, the most important benefit of the Mercury is the freedom of research and freedom of in innovation. So what I, I like uh, that I get a, you know, freedom of research to do what I would like to do in different uh, countries and the mobility is another thing. So I have been working with the Poland, uh, uh, a hospital in uh, Switzerland and now I am working hospital in Oxford. So uh, my basic project is more on uh, cancer th uh, therapies. So uh, through Mercury, every researcher has their, uh, you know, freedom of doing research, what their ideas, and they can implement very well. Thank you, uh, Dr. Anna Saeb. Um, very interesting. Uh, I think you have been to Poland and to the UK, uh, and you can see also, of course, within Europe, there is definitely a difference. Uh, but uh, I think uh, what you said, the freedom of research, you know, is, is the core of this uh, program. And um, I would also like to invite uh, Lavania to, to the conversation. We heard now uh, very great things uh, about the benefits and the motivation, but we also wanted to know from you about the challenges of uh, applying for this uh, prestigious uh, fellowship and what was your uh, biggest challenge during the application process and how did you overcome it? Sure. So uh, it, it's really nice to uh, meet other MC fellows over here, and thank you for this opportunity. And uh, to be really uh, clean and you know frank and open, I have heard a lot about this uh, Medicure Fellowship, but about the ITN and the second ones involved in that, not really. So when I was making a publication for my PhD, so I got this ITN Fellowship, and I was like, what is ITN? And what are the second ones? Because we, uh, when we usually apply, make application for a PhD, it's usually uh, for one university, one location. And this had a uh, mentioning of three different places, an industry, an academy. And what am I really going to do? I wasn't really sure about it. So I had to do a little bit of research because unfortunately, I didn't have much of people in my surrounding who could help me uh, more about knowing about this uh, ITN program. So I had to do a little bit of research about what the secondments are and how I will be able to manage and the fellowship 
mutation being a three-year program and one-third uh, being a mandated uh, second month in one of the partner institutions. So th these are a little bit of challenges which I, I took some time in figuring out, but, but it was really excite exciting because uh, we had the dream of doing in the best institution and we have several institutions and partner organizations in one place. It's like a platter, you know. So uh, that was really exciting when I made the application, but uh, uh, that was about the background verification, which I had to do a little bit and uh, read about mm. what this fellowship was. It, it would be really nice to have more uh, information in the application itself, because I'm not really sure how well this is reaching the people who are trying to make an application for PhD. Uh, but other than that, the process itself wasn't so difficult, I would say. It was, it was quite easy. Uh, the basic SOPs, the recommendation letters, the CVs. So these are some sort of documents which are basically required for making any kind of a PhD application. So I didn't really suffer much in uh, making the application exactly, but, but it was really exciting. And it was also exciting when I was called for an interview in person. That, that was something really interesting because usually most, most of the process goes like, you know, you get a Skype interview call or you go by a phone call or a couple of emails. And this was itself um, highlighting as in how prestigious or how, how great it can be and different it can be from the other fellowships that are available. Yeah. So, so this, uh, you're actually um, uh, um, emphasizing an interesting aspect of these ITN projects that they're very intersectoral and they're also uh, very diverse when it comes to locations and, and institutions, you know, and I think sometimes maybe when we are thinking uh, to apply for a PhD, we're looking at one country, one institution, one department, but the ITNs are very diverse and I think that's also the, the great excitement about it. And, uh, but uh, thanks for, for sharing your insight on sure. that. Uh, next, also, I would like to welcome Shruti to the discussion. Shruti, Hello, I, everyone. I, from your experience, uh, how does the research environment in Europe differ from that in India? Like, could you tell us a bit about that? So, the research environment, right now I'm in Brussels, so in ULB, Belgium. So, uh, the research environment in uh, Europe, if you compare it with India, I would say we ha here we have more research facility, I would mm. say, and uh, the gender balance in the lab, as I belong to a STEM category and as an electrical engineer, I would say the gender balance in my lab is better than what we generally see in India. And a good amount of money, which is available for the research for you. And, uh, uh, but uh, there are some, um, other aspects also, like, uh, yeah, you get a good work atmosphere, which is uh, very important when you start such kind of research under such prestigious scholarship. And then uh, it is more software oriented. And uh, one thing I would say about MSCA is like, you will get an opportunity to work with, uh, in collaboration with a lot of uh, universities as well as the industries. So right now, uh, like for me, I am uh, collaborating with two or three universities within a, t a time period and industries. So I don't think it would have been possible anywhere in the world, you know. So that's one of the things uh, I would say that differentiates between the research in India and research in Europe, I would say. Yeah. Well, thank you for, uh, for sharing your... Uh insight on that. I think uh, very good to hear that uh, the benefits of uh, uh, doing research in, in Europe and also the gender balance, which you have mentioned. Uh, back to uh, Nana Saheb, um, what would you say, like, uh, what has been your most uh, important experience in your, uh, during your time in Europe? And you've been a fellow in Poland, in Eastern Europe, and uh, now in the UK. And why would you recommend to other Indian researchers Europe as a research destination? Yeah, yeah. So I mentioned in my uh, previous uh, uh, talk that the freedom of research is the first thing that you can design your own ideas and discuss with your host institute or supervisor and then go for the application. And once it's funded, go for the implementation. The first thing. The second is the 
just not a scientific things what we do in our Marie Curie. Uh, we have, you know, more opportunities to go beyond that. So go with the people, those who have taxpayers, stakeholders, uh, do the outreach activities, explain them what science we are doing, what laboratory work we are doing. And then the mobility. So you have the access for, you know, every uh, kind of uh, research infrastructure uh, to implement our projects. So this is kind of, you know, uh, many Indian researchers, they face such a restrictions and most of the labs in India, they mostly focus on the doing research in a uh, lab based. So one of my recent example that I won the uh, European Union Innovation Radar Prize. And that was the, you know, thing from last two years when I was in Poland. So we are just not only working on publishing papers or doing a lab research. So we are thinking with the help of industrial partners, with the help of uh, technology transfer office in my university to translate our uh, lab research into the innovation and invention. And we get the support from my host institute, from European uh, project officers. I have been in Brussels many times uh, for uh, uh, discussions. And I have been involved with uh, European Commission cost actions, where I get, you know, get more influence on science. And we got that award. So it is kind of, you know, uh, the freedom, uh, different kind of world that we have been in India, so we are, I have a PhD from India, and I, I, I know uh, we more do on the research in lab base, but we don't think about the uh, invention, innovations beyond the uh, just publishing papers in a mm. fancy journal. So, and uh, now we are uh, very soon we are uh, uh, making our own venture, and we are now dealing with the many industries to make our own uh, company or spin off. So mm. this is, you know, uh, different than the other. I have been in Korea uh, and uh, other part of the uh, uh, Asia. So I know the, mm. is the best example or best experience in Europe is to, you can implement your idea as well in every domain. Exactly. And also I think you were saying that very well, that implementing your ideas and also connecting your research with the industry and also the... Yeah, industry, yeah. common people, stakeholder, and every, mm -hmm. every you know, domain mm -hmm. we can uh, go. Good, good. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Thorat. And uh, back to Garima. Uh, any tips for future applicants? Can you share a few tips? Uh, yes, yeah. for sure. So I'm going to address my uh, message directly to the future applicants. And please don't mind, I'm going to read from my notes because I really want to give some good tips. Uh, so for any scientific experiments to succeed, it is really important to understand what is the scientific problem you're trying to solve. Have you thoroughly studied what has been done before and what has been the limitation and what has been the lessons learned? And what are the solutions that you're proposing? How are you going to implement them? Do you have all the resources available? And um, have you thought about all the risk involved um, in the proposed solution? How unique is your solution? Can you explain precisely how your solution can solve that particular scientific problem? Does your solution has an adverse impact on the environment? And if so, how are you gonna tackle it? Um, how your proposal can benefit both the scientific society and public at the local and global level? And how are you gonna make sure that the knowledge of, and the expertise is transferred both ways between you and your host organization in Europe? And last but not the least, what mysteries are you going to unveil by solving this particular scientific problem? So I guess if you can incorporate all of these elements in your uh, proposal, you can definitely reflect the clarity of the subject in your mind and, um, and the urgency of solving this uh, scientific problem. So I would convey a beautiful message from Sir Arthur C. Clarke, who was, a, who was an English um, science fiction writer. And he said, new, new ideas pass through three periods. The first one, it cannot be done. Second, it probably can be done, but it's not worth doing it. And third, I knew it was a good idea all along. So I would just say that, go for it. Great, great. 
Uh, I think this was a great uh, end of the, 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 your tips. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Garima, for that. Um, so uh, we have uh, two more questions, one for Shruti, one for Lavanya. Shruti, uh, are you planning to continue your research with or in Europe? Like what are the future plans for you after your uh, fellowship? So yes, uh, I did my master's from Erasmus Mundus and then PhD from Marie Curie. So my next target will be applying for individual fellowships, postdocs. So Great. to complete the journey. Yeah, to complete this European journey. <laughs> very yeah. good, very good. Now this is good to hear. And uh, so now uh, last question uh, to our speaker, Lavania. Um, it's a gender question. Europe is, as you know, striving for gender equality in universities and also research environments. Uh, what has been your experience as an international female researcher uh, working, uh, studying, uh, living in Europe? Coming to the general, uh, gender equality question, so uh, I can see my screen and there are like three females here and three males. So this already speaks, you know, we are like three beneficiaries of the uh, MSCA fellowship. And there are many males around. So it, there is no way that, you know, women are being ignored uh, during this application process. In fact, they're more encouraged. Look at the name of this uh, fellowship, you know, the Mary Sklarovska Curie. So it's in the name of the woman. So that is already encouraging for the women to apply. So after coming here in Europe, uh, I have, uh, so we, uh, I'm working in this program, which is the Perico program. It's an IT network. And we have 15 PhD students who work in this project. So out of these 15, there are seven women uh, PhD candidates and there are eight male candidates. So this is kind of a balance with, which uh, MSCA group has been uh, probably keen during the time of uh, recruitment. So they really wanted to make sure they have uh, good candidates and they also wanted to maintain a gender balance uh, in this uh, network. And also in the lab which I work, this is amazing. I have equal, I can see equal number of women and uh, men. In fact, we don't really uh, find it difficult, you know, moving around different uh, other gender or it, it's just science we do. And we are all here together uh, with one goal and one aim and we work together and uh, we achieve it. So this is really nice and encouraging and also the supervisors in this program. So uh, there are like four male PIs and like four to five women supervisors. So I don't really see gender equality has been an issue at all uh, in this journey. And even before, even when I was pursuing my master's, I had a handful of uh, colleagues who were women and also a couple of uh, uh, male colleagues. So it, it has been really great working in Europe. It, it's really, really safe uh, with the current uh, scenario in different parts of the world being considered. I, I think it's really safe for a woman to uh, walk around, be and do uh, and perform research in, in, in uh, Europe. And as uh, other uh, fellow uh, colleagues are telling, so this, uh, this is kind of uh, really exciting because it gives quite the freedom which anybody would want to do. Nobody wants to have their work being hindered by anyone, right? So th that amount of freedom we get. So that is the first tool anyone would want to have in their hand. Then comes your experiments, it fails, it succeeds, or what will we achieve? At least we have that sense of freedom. And we are free mm -hmm. to think, to talk, and do, and we are respected uh, equally like any other European national over here, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much, uh, I think, for Lavanya, for your, your really sharing your personal experience and also uh, mentioning the freedom also that we have heard uh, the, the this program this fellowship brings a lot of freedom in terms of research but also in terms of life and and, and social life and so forth and also the equality uh, parameter which is very important so this is really great I'm, I'm very thankful to uh, all of you and also Dr. Fernandez uh, for coming in and being testimonies for this excellent and prestigious uh, uh, program uh, funded by the European Union. Uh, I just saw in the chat we had a, a, a few uh, comments about that we had not invited anybody from uh, social sciences and humanities. And uh, just to let you know, the MCA programs have a lot of opportunity for uh, students from social sciences and humanities. And also the individual fellowship, for instance, is as Thierry and Claire have mentioned, 
It's a, a, a bottom-up approach. So it means if you have an excellent uh, research idea, you can apply. There's no priority uh, uh, given uh, topic-wise or discipline-wise. So also students from social science and humanities do apply for these fellowships. Uh, you have a great chance also to get funded. So I would say we are uh, coming to the end of uh, today's webinar and also the end of the European Research Day here in India. It has been two exciting afternoons with very diverse uh, speakers and very interesting topics. Um, I would really uh, like to thank again all the speakers of today, especially of course our colleagues in Brussels who have joined in uh, for your time and your effort and your contribution. Um, we are much looking forward to the official start, the launch of Horizon Europe and the first round of calls and also especially the MSCA calls. Uh, thanks for the audience for being with us to, uh, through the afternoon. Again, sorry for the slight delay in the beginning. Um, and also thank you to the audience for having uh, posing these very relevant and important questions. Uh, Tanya, would you like to have uh, some concluding uh, remarks, words uh, for today's webinar? Uh, thank you very much. Well, first of all, thanking you, uh, Samra, for making it all possible. Great cooperation. Uh, and also, um, I think, very interesting session, and I'm very glad that we could do that timely. Uh, as uh, the director, Christina Rousseau, said, this Horizon Europe is still under discussion in Brussels, important issues, but it gives you a time perspective. And uh, also already you have the big uh, lines of what to expect because uh, preparing for research proposals, make, uh, you need to do it, you need to plan it well ahead. So I hope that what we could give you today is um, assurances that there will be options perspectives. So I would say as a concluding remark, stay tuned because opportunities are coming and with the great support from Araxis, you will be all informed. I would also like to thank the testimonies. They were all really great. They, they can do, do that much better than us. We only outline bureaucratically the conditions and the options, but they're speaking from the heart and there's so much appreciating of what Europe offers for, for India uh, was also very much uh, welcomed. So on these positive notes, we didn't start uh, on time and hence exactly the same delay we close. So perfect. Uh, the 11 minutes too late, we, we close 11 minutes. Right? Exactly. So we were in time actually. Overall, we were in time. Exactly. Yeah, Perfectly. that's what I wanted you, wanted you to say because the delay was caused by me, but uh, it doesn't yeah. matter. I think we were all connected and it is yeah. also impressive that in this challenging times that we can continue to be collect, connected. And yeah. you shouldn't forget that all that is possible because of you, scientists, that researchers that are so interested in finding solutions to problems, anticipating problems and finding solutions, because all this technology was not event invented when Corona was here. It was there and look at how further we could deploy it. So we, we scientists have to be avant-garde and mm -hmm. uh, there is lots of room for that also in our program. So once again, I encourage you to continue to be a scientist, a researcher, an innovator, and more so to do that together with Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tanya, for this beautiful concluding words. And you know, you, you fellowship holders are our ambassadors. Please, you know, keep on spreading the word, promoting Marie Curie. This are, is a unique uh, fellowship program, and the more people apply, the more people know about it. The more scientists work together, the better it is for the uh, entire scientific community. Thank you again for joining or wishing you all a nice uh, afternoon, evening or uh, lunchtime, wherever you are. Bye and uh, see you at our next uh, webinar. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, so Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Excellent. Bye-bye, Brussels.